Those with ability and experience may be promoted to become supervisors on the floor or instructors in the schools which Western Union maintains in many cities. Here, the trainees learn by practicing on actual equipment. Generally, a high school education is desirable. The teleprinter keyboard is similar to a typewriter. As the keys are punched, the distant receiver records each letter on a moving paper tape. An operator removes the tape and gums it to the familiar yellow blanks. The letters NL on this tape identify the message as a night letter. The operator must know how to handle the various classifications, such as day letter, night letter, deferred cable, and special listing. To develop a trainee into a competent operator of the teleprinter and multiplex machines requires from two to three months. Job opportunities for men are found in the maintenance of all transmission equipment and in the operation of the relay offices. In the carrier system department, trained technicians maintain equipment that transmits hundreds of messages over a single pair of wires. In the experimental laboratories, College-trained research engineers work constantly to find new methods and techniques to provide quicker service. One of these developments is radio beam telegraphy, transmitting 1,040 messages in each direction simultaneously through a series of high towers. It won't be long now until your no dial telephones are ready to serve you. And I know you're as glad as I am that we're going to have an as up-to-date telephone system here as any in America some pointers on using your new dial telephone. Miss White. Uh, Mr. Johnson has just told you that your calls are handled in the dial system by an electrical operator. Of course you've got to understand that the dial system doesn't do away with the need for human operators. Although more than half the telephones in America are dial, we have more operators than we ever had before. Better service means that people make more calls, and more calls mean more operators. Dial or no dial, you'll still be placing out-of-town calls. You'll still want us to find unlisted numbers for you, or you may need help in an emergency. The main things to remember are, first, look up the number in your new directory. Second, raise your telephone and listen for the dial tone. Third, dial each number carefully, making sure you bring the dial all the way around to the finger stop each time. Then, let go. Don't try to hurry it back. I'm sure if you follow these simple rules, you'll find your new dial telephones easy to operate, convenient to use, and quick in service. This is Bob Bank marketing manager, radio and Victrola division of RCA Victor. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. It's dramatically new. It's an RCA Victor exclusive, made possible only through years of research, inventions, and innovations. Living stereo played on a record through the all new two in one RCA Victor stereo orthophonic high fidelity Victrolas. In this speaker, you can hear the left-hand section of the orchestra predominating. In this one, the right-hand section predominates. And together, they give us the fullness of living stereo. Along with the new records, comes a complete, dramatically new line of RCA Victor 2-in-1 stereo orthophonic Victrolas, covering the entire price range. All models will play monorally as well as stereophonically. 
In other words, it will play any record, whether 78, 45, 33 and a third, 16 and two thirds, or the new living stereo records. RCA Victor again is first. The first in the industry to announce a complete new line of two-in-one stereo orthophonic high fidelity Victrolas. It's the most tremendous new musical experience you can have. And now it's available for everyone. To the heartbeat of the Sage computer. Every instrument in this room is constantly monitoring, testing, pulse taking, controlling. For this is the programming and operations center for the Sage computer which surrounds it. To it come continuous streams of data which it continuously absorbs and stores on magnetic drums, tapes, and cores. In one of the new headquarters of computer defense, one of the direction centers of what the Air Force calls SAGE. Beyond the fantastic capacity for calculation and memory, SAGE possesses the newest and most revolutionary advance in data processing, the display scope a computer-generated visual display, on call as needed. Until SAGE, the miracle of the computer was its ability to calculate in split seconds and then provide printed information. But SAGE needed more than this. For the lightning shifts of air battle the Air Force requested from IBM, a computer capable of translating volumes of changing data into a continuous flow of interpretations which could be understood at a glance. Air defense required split-second presentation as well as split-second calculation. Given this objective, IBM applied the latest extension of data processing, the display scope, a giant picture tube on which computer results are instantaneously and continuously translated into... I traffic. am your permit to drive an automobile, your license to use the highway system of the United States, I am only a card in your wallet or purse, yet I unroll before your eyes a magic carpet, the millions of miles of highways and byways that crisscross the nation. I am your round-trip travel ticket, your passport to pleasure. With me, you can motor from the Atlantic to the Pacific, from the Gulf to the Great Lakes. You can travel with me as your only identification. I am the only commuter's ticket you need to drive to and from school or work, day after day, year after year. I have become vital to more than 50 million people in this land of ours. I am their constant companion. I go with them wherever they go. The farmer on his way at sunup. The bus driver, the truck driver, the ambulance driver, the policeman, the cab driver. No matter who they are, no matter where they are, I am with them. With me in their possession, the drivers of our millions of rubber-tired vehicles help keep turning the wheels of our national economy, whether they roll over highway or city street. A camera from the past can take a picture of the past to show how our horizons have been expanded by the motor car. And the greatness of America has been that we are never content to stop at the horizon we can see. We know that there is another and another horizon beyond. The motor car industry, as it has recognized its responsibilities in our progress through yesterday to get where we are today, is already at work on the design of tomorrow, exploring, developing, testing, to improve the cars we drive, to make them safer, more comfortable, more enjoyable. If we are to realize in full the motor car's vast potential for good, we must use it and care for it wisely. The motor car has been the key to open new horizons, not for the few, but for all. And all of us share in the responsibility of safeguarding the benefits it has brought. If we plan for the future, if we look ahead to clear all obstacles and roadblocks, 
if we recognize the importance of this great individual freedom of movement, the motor car will be the key to our ever-widening horizons of tomorrow.